Hello folks, I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, happy Wednesday. It's uh, been a while since I've taped one of these. Uh, Trish and I have been traveling a, um, a fair amount and visiting family and things, so uh, we've neglected to get some uh, messages on there. So it's uh, good to be back. Uh, and again, I hope everyone is well. Today I wanted to talk about talking. Uh, talking is something that we do a lot of, um, some people more than others. And generally speaking, it is a good thing. The Lord created us to have communion and conversation with each other. Um, the Lord talked as he taught. The prophets talked as they taught and instructed us. It's an important thing. Um, but sometimes uh, too much of it could get us into trouble. And I think that we may want to consider looking at it more purposefully. In other words, we're speaking uh, has a purpose behind it. We have limited words, we have limited opportunities to talk to people and want to make the best of them. We certainly want to speak the truth, we certainly want a witness of Christ when we have the opportunity, we certainly want to be a good example for others. But the scriptures caution us about our mouths and about what we say. And it's not always just bad things, cursing someone, scorning one, saying bad language, gossiping. Sometimes it just gets out of hand, just the idleness of our talk. The longer we do it, the more apt we are to say things that we may regret. I've done it. I've walked away from conversations just thinking, why did I let the conversation go there? Why did I get into that so much? No one benefited. It wasn't edifying anyone. Maybe even got a little gossipy, perhaps. But it's important to try to constrain our mouths and try to even constrain the conversation in a sense to speak of something that will edify, that will encourage, that will speak well of the Lord, witness. Not that every conversation has to be a witnessing tool. Every conversation probably is in one way or another, really. But Proverbs verse, chapter 10, verse 19 says that too much talk leads to sin. I think what the, probably King Solomon is saying is that Eventually, if it goes on too long in the wrong situation, you could lead to sin. Just talking and talking and talking. Just this idle talk with no specific purpose in mind. Psalms 141.3 says, uh, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. So the psalmist took very seriously what he said because he knows that words matter. This sticks and stone stuff uh, really isn't true. Now, we could hurt, we could edify, we could do a lot with our tongues. And the psalmist is asking that the Lord, that the spirit within him would watch and guard his mouth and his tongue. Psalm 34, 13 says, keep your tongue from evil and your lips from deceit. Uh, and you think it, it's not always that hard to fall into that. Uh, the bottom line is we want to look good and we want to look good in front of others. So it doesn't take much in a conversation just to start kind of talking well of yourself things perhaps that aren't even true because we just want to make ourselves look good especially sometimes we could pay particular attention to people that are of a higher status um, maybe they've got some mon some money they're in a certain office they're popular and we're tempted to want to look better in the eyes of those people so we may say things that aren't even true. In fact, just trying to talk to them and convince them that we're pretty cool or pretty hip is a big waste of time. And I think that's part of that idle talk that we're best to avoid. In our conversations, we're looking to help and edify others, not build ourselves up. But that's easy to do when unfortunately it comes quite naturally. In the book of Matthew chapter 26, we have a situation where um, Jesus is coming to Jerusalem, and he is welcomed joyously, is celebrated. There's the Jesus goes in and uh, goes into the temple and chase out the money changers. And later in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus goes off on his own to pray, and he instructs the disciples to do the same, to watch and to pray. What an opportunity to sit around these 12 guys and just chat and talk about the events of the day for Jesus himself, too. Who knows what kind of things that could have been said. I was about to go turn some tables over myself before Jesus left. 
oh, you should have saw the group that I was uh, with uh, praising the Lord. Just kind of things that who knows what could have been said, but the Lord's instruction to them was watch and pray. It's a time for that, not just idle talk. Not Again, not that those things are bad in that situation, but the time is close and we need to be very careful about what we say and very careful not to say too much and spend enough time watching and praying. I want to read just a little bit uh, from Thomas Akempis, who talks about this a little bit. He talks about, he encourages us not to lay our hearts open to every man. Sometimes we look to confide in people. Some things that we probably shouldn't be confiding, confiding in them about. Unless it's someone of good stature, someone or, or good, um, good moral character, I should say. A Christian brother or sister. Uh, someone of, um, that has shown and displayed some wisdom. Or a lot of wisdom. Uh, but often we're willing just to kind of open our hearts to anyone that will listen. And not a lot of people want to listen these days, so I know it's it's hard to come by someone who good and wants to pay attention to you. But we've got to be careful not just to lay all of our secrets and struggles just to anyone. We want to make sure we're getting some good counsel back from these people. He, uh, just to quote him here, he says, Desire to be familiar with God alone and his angels and avoid the acquaintance of men. We must have love toward all, but familiarity with all is not expedient. So again, this is old. He wrote this in the 1400s. But basically what he's saying is we want to be familiar with God mostly. It is his presence and companionship that we want the most. We want to love the people around us. Definitely we want to demonstrate that. And often that's going to be through talking to them. But being familiar familiar with everyone, some people have the need to uh, conjure or to to gather as many friends as possible. They want to be popular. They want uh, to have phone numbers and call and get together just great numbers around them all the time. And often these acquaintances are just that. There's not much depth to the relationship, but often we find that important. Uh, but it really isn't. It's mostly our relationship with God. Um, and when we're encumbered with a lot of relationships often, it makes it more different or difficult. Often that's a lot more phone calls, a lot more text. Sometimes it's important just to focus on a few godly friends, focus mostly upon the Lord and let him direct us. We just have to watch idle conversation all the time because over time we may just say things that aren't edifying and that we may regret. So just, um, I hope that's helpful and I hope it was sort of clear, uh, but uh, God bless you guys and I hope you have a wonderful night and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you next week.